Today we're painting the base coat and the camouflage on the 135th scale Yag Tiger from Tacom. Hey what's up guys welcome to Scale Wonderland. So after we built this uh, wonderful kit by Tacom last week uh, you can uh, hit the, uh, the link on the top right corner if you didn't see this video but uh, we're gonna paint uh, the base coat and all the camouflage for this uh, big bad boy. Um, the first thing is we're just gonna remove all the port uh, all the part before we paint uh, everything. The one of the important part that uh, a lot of people missing is uh, to prime your metal part. The only reason why is um, because if you're using, for example, in my case, I'm using um, uh, water-based paint. Um, you can uh, your paint can could peel and and everything like that if you don't apply uh, a metal primer. Um, I'm using uh, to basically do the prime job before uh, before the base coat. I'm using AK um, third generation uh, black primer. This primer is pitch black, and honestly, the coverage is absolutely amazing. So, if you didn't try it, I suggest that you buy a bottle of this primer and try it for yourself. It's probably one of the best, uh, I would say, water-based primer uh, that I see and acrylic primer that I saw uh, on the market so far. After we prime uh, our model, we're just gonna add some highlights. Uh, basically, I'm using white gray from Vallejo, but you can use a color like deck tan or even pure white, it's gonna work. Um, I'm adding highlight um, just to basically add some variation to your uh, your paint job. For the highlights, uh, we're trying to um, to to uh, get the erased area. Uh, a little bit like you're trying to dry brush uh, your model. But by using an airbrush, um, we're not gonna put uh, white paint all over the place. We're just gonna try to focus on the raised area and where you want to put your highlights. This is the result so far with uh, our prime job done and all of our highlights. Now we're gonna be uh, ready to apply our base coat. So before we apply um, our main color, uh, we're just gonna add some light rust and also uh, some variation of dark rust on the side um, of our tank and uh, on the um, part of the metal barrel. Uh, only to get again some variation to our color and when we will do our chipping in the next video uh, it's gonna be useful to get uh, as much detail and some rust detail so after your our light rust I'm just gonna add some variation to our rust tone by adding some dark rust um, basically just go easy on it um, just like I said it's only a matter of uh, adding some uh, some different tones to our rust color the next step we will mask our uh, our rust tone that we just paint by using uh, a painter uh, masking tape you can use uh, Tamiya. Tamiya has uh, some absolutely great uh, masking tape, but uh, unfortunately, uh, I didn't have uh, an and I'm empty on the uh, 
and also we're gonna use some liquid mask just to make sure that uh, our paint uh, is not gonna go through our um, our masking tape And finally, we're ready to apply our base coat. I'm using a dark yellow, but uh, in fact, it's uh, Dunkelgelb. Uh, that's the German name for uh, dark yellow, I would say. I'm not sure, so there's if there's some German people who's watching my video, just make sure that you leave a comment that uh, it's the right way of saying it. So. We're just going to apply uh, our dark yellow um, all over the place. Uh, I'm using the Ammo Mig uh, Dunkelgel color for the only reason is that the coverage uh, for this paint is absolutely amazing. Uh, I also use in the past a uh, dark yellow from Vallejo. It's pretty good, but uh, I really like the tone of the Dunkelbell from uh, Ammo Mig. Now we're ready to start our camouflage pattern. I'm using uh, uh, AK plastic putty um, to uh, to work with my camouflage. I normally freehand almost everything, but if you watch my other video, I tried this method uh, once or twice, and the results are absolutely fantastic. So. For you guys that are not, uh, I would say, really good or beginners in airbrushing, this product is absolutely amazing. And I will put the link in the description for all the product that I'm using in this video, including the paint and the airbrush that I'm using. This product makes your job super easy and also it's reusable, so you can use it many times and the good thing about it is um, basically it's not sticky uh, to your end and it's not uh, doesn't leave a greasy feel uh, to your model and also uh, in your end so the first color is uh, Reza de Grand so basically <clears throat> it's a green uh, color uh, that will be the first part of our camouflage uh, but with the plastic putty that you just apply you don't have to figure it out uh, a way of doing your uh, camouflage pattern. You're just basically spraying uh, the green color all over the place in your model. So that's the result so far. Um, like I said, if you're not uh, familiar or you're just start airbrushing, um, basically this way of doing your camouflage um, it's probably the easiest way I find out uh, honestly it's you cannot miss it so that's the beauty about it now we're just gonna apply some more uh, camouflage uh, plastic putty uh, to mimic our uh, basically we're gonna paint our brown uh, strips of camouflage so we're just gonna add um, the plastic putty uh, where you want to um, to get your green uh, protected. Now we're ready to apply our brown color. I'm using uh, Rod Brown by uh, AK uh, Interactive. It's the third generation paint and honestly those paint are absolutely amazing also because they have some really good coverage so you don't have to do like uh, three or four different uh, uh, spray uh, spray session so with just one session I'm all, I'm able to uh, to get the even coat of paint all over my model 
So now it's time to remove our uh, plastic putty. It's super easy because it's, like I said, it's not sticky at all. And even if there's uh, a lot of paint um, on it, you can reuse it for uh, another time. And also it's time to remove our masking tape, uh, leaving a really nice uh, rust area. And like I said, we're gonna be ready uh, in the next video uh, to start our weathering process uh, like usual. But like I said, by doing that, um, you're gonna have a really nice uh, rust tone. So now it's time for decals. Um, basically in this model, I'm just gonna apply one specific decals on each side. That's the, um, that's the crust right there. That's the only decal I will add because, like I said, this uh, this tank will be a little bit banged up. So uh, I don't want to uh, apply decal because for the only reason is with our weathering process, we're not going to see it. So it doesn't really matter uh, of applying all the decals in the box. And for the last step, honestly, I'm just going to use a gloss varnish. You can use a satin varnish sometimes i would say most of the time i'm using a satin varnish but i'm just uh, sealing everything up uh, with uh, a vallejo gloss varnish so that's it for today uh, that's the result with our camouflage pattern uh, painted um, next week uh, basically we're gonna start the weathering process with uh, pin wash, with uh, oil dots. Um, we're also gonna add some, uh, some mud, some rust, and we're gonna start uh, building and make your tank live. So I hope you enjoyed this one. And again, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. I really enjoyed this one.